Uh, welcome. Today we have with us, it's a pleasure to have with us Dr. Kirk Parsley, who's down there in Texas. Kirk, just for those people that aren't familiar, just share your background. I know you Navy SEAL, you're a your performance medicine guy. but Yeah, so I was I was a SEAL right out of high school at UNT UT. So you might know Katy, Texas, when it was a when it was a small rice farming town that I grew up yeah, in. Yeah, Texas. just west of, just, just west of Houston, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So joined actually at 17, left right after my 18th birthday. Didn't even know what a SEAL was, but I just heard it was like the toughest training in the world. So I wanted to go do that. <laughs> I figured I'll do that. It's always time. So it's two for one. They tra train you four years in medical school. You got to give them eight years as a doctor. I figured I'd get back to the SEAL teams and get back to the community. And my whole plan was to be an orthopedic surgeon. And I'd done my first year residency and then you, and the Navy, you have to do your first year and then you go out to the fleet as they call it. And then you come back. That's how they keep GPs. And so I figured I'd go back to the SEAL teams, give something back to the community. I got there right when they were building their first sports medicine facility ever. So I got put in charge of that. That's pretty, you know, logical fit. So the entire purpose of me going to sleep tonight is to repair from today, right? Everything I'm doing right now is catabolic. Like just being awake is being catabolic. Breathing, you know, yeah. When I work out, I'm damaging my muscles, right? If we do anything worth doing, when we go to the gym, we come out of the gym weaker than we went into the gym. We get stronger at night. We, so I'm going to I'm gonna repair everything and then I'm going to prepare, meaning I'm going to restock the shelves of all the nutrient densities or whatever, trace elements, whatever I need to do to put around my cells, re replenishing glycogen stores, all that stuff. So when I first go to sleep, deep sleep is kind of the first thing that I'm going to go into as long as I'm circadianly aligned. And so I, I'm going to go to sleep in what we call stage one sleep, which is that's when you're just noticing that things aren't quite the same. You can still hear people, but it's dr drifting in and out of dream state. And then I go down into two and then three and then four stages, three and four, what we call deep sleep, omega and uh, or theta and delta wave brain states. And then that travels across time on the X axis. And then I'm going to stair step out of that. I'm going to go from four to three to two past one and back i'm going to do rem and then after i finish rem i'm going to come back down and that's one sleep cycle which is about 90 to 120 minutes the first sleep cycle is about 90 percent deep sleep and deep sleep is the most anabolic time in your life the lowest stress hormones you will ever have so stress hormones are catabolic obviously the lowest stress hormones you will ever have at any 24-hour period is during deep sleep your stress hormones have to be low enough for you to sleep and then the, what's happening there is the neuroregulation of all of your hormones. So all of your anabolic hormones are being measured by the hypothalamus and then pituitary is secreting or not secreting to increase all of your hormones. And that's affecting obviously things like testosterone and growth hormone but and thyroid hormone, but it's also affecting neuroregulation of appetite, ghrelin, leptin sensitivity. And then I'm essentially repairing everything during the same time. One of the first things that happens when I go to sleep is the glial cell, which hold the structure of the brain, they contract by about 30%, allows the CSF to flow through. People call this the glymphatic system, mm -hmm. and it flushes out waste products. I flush out the waste products, I increase my hormones. The hormones then reset the anabolic rate, increase the anabolic rate. Thyroid comes up, that increases anabolic rate, and I'm the most anabolic I'll ever be, and I start repairing things. I start getting rid of waste products and repairing, and then I go into REM sleep, and REM sleep is really more cognitive and emotional. So during REM sleep, you will rehearse everything that you've heard today, everything you've thought today, probably definitely everything you've said. You'll run that through your brain a couple of times and you'll figure out whether you need it or not. And it'll either become a more durable pathway and be attracted and uh, be attached to old information, which is how you learn things, right? You can look at it from multi dimensions if you have, a tr if you have attachments from old information, um, or it'll be pruned off because you'll this determine it's useless and you'll you'll actually prune that neuron off um and then you also emotionally categorize your events so we think this is a big component of ptsd because it tends to be when people go through severe trauma they tend to sleep poorly and one of the things that we know happens during REM sleep is the emotional categorization of any event so if you have a fight with your wife about dirty dishes in the sink or something that should be a non-issue right like the second that argument's over it, it, you should probably never think about that again, right? But if you don't sleep well that night or if you don't sleep at all that night and you don't emotionally categorize that correctly, that could become a real trigger. And that's a banal example, but that's, that's what we think happens with PTSD and why people are, are more triggered by emotional events that rightfully are emotional, but they're, they're hyper-emotional, they're you know, exceedingly emotional. And 
And then each sleep cycle progresses throughout the night, becomes more REM and deep sleep and less deep. So then by the time you get to the morning, it's about 90% REM sleep and your last sleep cycle and 10% deep. So when you miss sleep in the beginning of the night, you tend to miss the anabolic period of your life of that day. And then when you miss, when you wake up super early and skip your REM, then that's cognitive and emotional.